four of my most performed and favorite double lifts. You guys have asked for this information. I know a whole bunch of you are sort of intermediate magicians. You already have down your double lifts. You're confident with that. This is not for you. Or I guess I'm sure there'll be some value, hopefully some details. But this is for people more who are just really getting into card magic. And you need, I'm going to say it, you need a solid double lift. Now, you don't need 45 or 4 even, frankly. You just need one good double lift. Now, what makes a good double lift? Well, it looks visually convincing. When you look at it, it looks like the guy's handling only one card. Fair enough. But there's more than just the optics. And this is something people forget in sleight of hand. It's not enough to fool the eye. In fact, sometimes I think it might be better to not fool the eye as much and work on fooling the person. And what I mean by that is, what's the energy? What's the spirit? You can do something visually perfect, but if it seems stiff, if you're not comfortable with it, it's not going to be, it can be visually deceptive, but it'll still trigger suspicion. And this is what you do not want. Not only does suspicion undercut the overall effect, it's distracting. When people feel suspicious, all of a sudden their focus is all over the place. And when their focus is all over the place, the trick will not be clear. Without clarity, we don't have magic. This is why it's so important to practice stuff to a point where you are comfortable with it. I've cited this before on the channel, but Bruce Lee, yes, Bruce Lee, of all people, of all, of all people. He, um, he was fond of saying, I believe while eating chicken, he would say that, uh, you know, you cannot be your fastest or um, your most smooth unless you're relaxed. You need to be relaxed. So for those who are brand new to card magic, a double lift gets its name double by handling 19 cards. No, you're gonna handle two cards. You're gonna handle the top two cards and you're gonna to try to keep them totally square so that when you turn them over, it looks like you're showing just the top card of the pack, when in fact you're showing the face of the second card from the top. Now, how do you keep the cards together? How do you do it? Now, there's lots of different ways magicians over the many years have used to try to keep these two cards together. You'd be shocked and surprised at different techniques. But here we're gonna use, just gonna look at a double lift, based on a, a, a deck of shuffled cards, an ordinary deck, maybe even a borrowed pack. Right? So the first uh, double lift I want to share with you, uh, I call the get ready double. Okay, now if you're brand brand new to magic, what you might have learned already is to come over from behind with the thumb and you riffle the back edges until you only have two cards up here, just two cards. Then you have your fingers on the front, the thumb of the back, and you show this card. Now this can work. If you do it stiffly and it's awkward and all this stuff, it won't work. But while a lot of advanced magicians will look down on this kind of technique of showing a card, the reality is a lot of amateur new magicians who do this and do it confidently and smoothly. And then apparently you have the four, I'm going to put the four down on the table, snap my fingers, it's changed. That will deceive people. That will flow, especially if you're confident with it. However, what more advanced sleight of hand generally aspires for is you want things to look relaxed and natural. This kind of coming over here and showing a card is not going to be anywhere near as natural as coming over casually and flipping over the card like this, okay? So this beginner idea of having um, a break at the back and taking it with your thumb and showing it, it will work, okay? And it's a great place to start, but in time you'll want to move on to more natural looking double lifts. So one of the ones I do and this is, for me, a bulletproof double lift because I'll be working in a place, a bar or a restaurant, whatever. I maybe have beer on my hands or maybe somebody's got a bit of chicken wing sauce on the deck. And when the deck gets to a certain point, when you're two hours into a four-hour walk-around gig, some of these more subtle and, and, and elegant double lifts that work great at the magic meeting are not going to be dependable. So here's one that is bulletproof for me. You push off the top card. You flick it with a finger. By pushing off the card from the deck and by flicking it with your finger, all focus goes there. And while all focus goes there, over here with my left hand, my, the back of my hand is showing to people. But all I do is I push with my thumb, I push the top card back, uh, push it off the deck, and then pull it back. And then pulling it back, I get that little break I want between the pinky, the top, the ball of the pinky there, and the first card. So right now I have no break. But just by doing this, you can get the break you need. So typically, though, it's nice to have a line like, would you be amazed if this was your card? And they say something, and I say, well, tell me, was this your card here? And they say, no, it wasn't. And you go, wasn't the jack? Okay, let me see. And you change into another card. They're selecting the card and get a nice reaction. So you need a line. You need a reason to take this top card off. Notice that you could have the selection secretly on top of the deck. 
have someone touch any card they want say would you be amazed if this was your card and they go yeah and you put it back and you're like this and you like that now theoretically you're going to talk to sleight of hand magicians more advanced magicians who will ask you the question why did you take it off the deck and then put it back on the deck isn't that good you know that's not motivated it's unnatural and they're right however this will fool and deceive and not trigger people day after day. I use this all the time, like I said, where I take a card off, I flick it, come back, and it's a bulletproof double lift. And what that means is I'm 100% confident, which is key. You don't wanna be thinking about, did I get the double? Oh my God, am I gonna get three cards? So when performing live for real people to be able to take it off, bring it back, and know every single time I've got my double is very, very valuable. The next double lift I wanna look at is another one I use a lot and it's called a strike double. Now, the way a strike double looks, uh, a strike double, oh, strike double, the way the strike double looks is it looks like you just come over and turn over a card. And what makes the strike double unique is that there is no get ready. So you might be wondering, well, if there's no get ready, if there's no gap between the top two cards, how do you make sure you get the top two cards every time? Not three, not one, but two. And you know, the word is, it sounds like a punchline, practice. Literally, it's just practice. Now, a couple of tips here. First, the deck is beveled, which means pushed slightly to one side, okay? Which means that I have better access rather than the entire pack being clean and the same on one side by beveling the deck slightly. And you'll find you don't really bevel it just straight to your right. What you actually do is bevel it and it's sort of down on the edge. It's sort of slightly, What's the expression to use here? It's sort of, they're lying down here, but they're sort of almost at the world's tiniest fan to one side, okay? They're beveled like that. So when I wanna do my uh, the strike double, again, there's no get ready, but with practice, you're gonna bring your finger over and you'll know not to hit it down here. You'll know not to hit the deck too, uh, with the first finger too angled so that you only get the top card. With practice, you'll be able to find exactly, and what the tip of the finger does really is it comes up to the last four or five cards and just quickly finds that same after same after same that same feeling of there's my double okay so there's two cards there and again no get ready just me coming over finding oh took me a beat there and you'll find that instinctively what i'll do and this is something i've learned the hard way is that if i find that i don't immediately get my double my left hand kind of angles in and i instinctively start to use because sometimes you'll come up and you'll get maybe just one card and you'll feel oh that's one but if you extend just a little bit of the first finger, you'll get that second card going. But you need cover for that. So you come over, hit the one, oops, I missed my double, turn everything slightly, giving you the time you need to turn the double over, okay? So that's the strike double, slightly beveled deck. Fingers come over, grab those two cards, and ideally, now, the other thing I wanna point out is uh, when you're turning over your double, okay? You turn over the two cards as one with the strike. I drop them over there, but I'm retaking the break, not here, but with the flesh of the thumb. So just a little bit of the thumb so that when I take this card and I turn it over from here to here, I deliberately uh, stretch the thumb. Now it's all flows, but I, I don't want the thumb here. I want to extend the thumb back to here so that when this falls, my thumb is fully extended and I can kind of meet it and push in. That keeps my break, it keeps my break here. You can see it there. It keeps the break along the left side of the deck. So when I come back and turn it over, all I have to do now is push. Just release my grip a little soft, push with the muscle there, and it gives me, it pushes the double cleanly to the edge and I can grab it and turn it over. So in performance speed, the strike double, you come over, you hit the side, hit two, thumb's got the break. Now I push it a little, and that's that push I'm exaggerating, to turn the double back over, and I have a really clean double lift without any get ready required. Marlowe's alignment double lift. Now this is also sometimes called the diamond double, okay? It's a, it's a knacky one. This takes some real practice. There's a lot going on. One of the virtues of this is it looks really fair, okay? The other virtue, is that uh, there's no get ready. So again, there's no get ready for this. This is how it looks. Looks like I push the top card off, turn it over, and boom. Okay. It's got a very tight, clean feel to it, okay? Top card, turned over. Now what I'm doing is this, and this will strike you as crazy, but 
There's a lot of fine little details in here, but boy, it looks nice and it's clean. And again, no get ready required. Here it is. I am going to push the top card off. But as I do, I'm also going to turn my hand slightly, just to give me a little cover. Because obvious, because what I'm going to do, if I held the deck like this, the spectator could probably see the secret action. So I'm going to turn it, the deck a little like this as I do it. The tip of the thumb is going to push the card off, but I'm not going to so much push it off cleanly to one side. I'm more pushing it off a little bit on an angle. Okay? So it's not going straight from my left to my right going on a little bit more of an angle. And while the tip of the thumb is getting the top card, I push down so that not the tip, but more this part of the thumb down here is going to contact the second card and push that too. So you're really pushing off two cards. Okay? And again, you pull, if the thumb doesn't start here, the thumb needs to start all the way kind of curled back up. Pushing off here, second card goes off. Now, this is where the interesting stuff starts. You come along with the left, uh, the, sorry, the right middle finger. Hits both. And as both, I'm going to tilt this down so you can see exactly what's going on here. It hits both. And you pull, you pull both a little back towards yourself while your left thumb is going to pull the top card back to the base of your thumb. And look what happens. Here, hit, pull, everything gets aligned. It all gets cleaned up at the base, the very base of the thumb, the corner of the pack. Okay? So the action is a push out, a pull back, an align, and then a nice diamond corner turn. This is one of these things again, that whole gestalt thing where, you know, all these little elements have to come together. People sometimes you get lucky, the top two cards kind of go along to the ride together a bit. And then you pull back to make sure they're clean. Once you have that, the fingers and thumbs come over, finger and thumb comes over, and you turn it over. Note the grip of my right fingers too. As you're pushing, you're aligning. The moment I want you to see is here with my right first finger on top, my left tip of my left finger is aligning on the bottom, my right thumb sliding down so everything is nice and neat, and then I turn everything over. And you don't want to do this. You never want to do this with your double because there's always a chance of this double edge being seen. So whenever you can, your instinct should be to tip down. The front edge goes down. The last one I want to share with you is something I came up with uh, many, many years ago. It's original to me. However, I've seen other people and certainly uh, a bunch of other magicians over the years I've noticed to have come up with a very similar kind of thing. I mean, this is double lift stuff. It's going to, a lot of magicians are going to overlap on their work. I call this the water wheel double. And the reason I call it the water wheel double is because there's this moment where the cards, where your two cards, of course, your two cards, your handling is one. There's this moment where the two cards are flipped forward, and I always thought it looked a little boom up into the fingers like a water wheel, from the old <laughs> riverboat style water wheel going round and round. For this, whether you get into it with your get ready or strike double, I can do a strike double. However, you get into it, the first part is a standard double lift. You could even use Marlowe's alignment, okay, for this, for the, for the first part where you turn it over and you can leave it there. But whatever you're doing, you're handling the double. And this is not something I would ever do once my get deck gets funky at a walk around gig. No, thank you. It's too dodgy, too iffy. Um, once you've got your double, you turn over the two cards as one. And, you know, with practice, you can go from just a quarter to a third to even a half away out, okay? Then the left finger, fingertip, is going to come up. Let's do a third for now. The left finger is going to come up from below and hit not to left or right, dead center dead center, and then you're going to release the grip here while these fingers come over to kind of uh, stop the card from flipping right off the deck here like that. Okay, let me try it. Performance speed is double, turn, grab, turn over, and you're done. So if you get a light grip, uh, sort of a light feeling to this move, it can really, really share the idea or really uh, convey the idea that you're handling just a single card when in fact it's once again a version for a double lift. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe, hit that subscribe. If you like this, I mean, I think this is real grassworks, important stuff, this sleight of hand, this double lift stuff is very important to build all your card magic on. So if you like this video, if you find value in it, even if you're an old pro, if there was some line or some detail that you found value in, please hit the like button. 
Uh, and a big thank you for all your patience. I know you guys have been very patient with the new channel, uh, the Connect and Influence channel, my new psychology channel. It is coming soon. Chris and I have just started to tape some stuff. We're gonna be launching the videos very soon, uh, including, and I've been teasing you guys with it, and it is coming, a crazy, crazy contest where I'm gonna give away thousands and thousands of dollars of really cool magic merchandise, okay? It's coming soon, and it's gonna involve sort of the first wave of subscribers to the new channel. So if you wanna be automatically entered into this contest and get your chance to have your, you know, get your hands on some really cool free magic merch, don't hesitate. Also make sure to subscribe to my Connect and Influence channel. I'll have the link here or there or down there, whatever, okay? It's coming. Uh, I'm excited to share with you guys uh, more directly even uh, some of the very important psychology behind connecting with people, influencing people, persuading, building your confidence, uh, personal branding, uh, the power of trying to be authentic with people uh, professionally and personally. All that stuff's coming soon.